I'm not feeling hopeful about this blind date. Hey besties, it's Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be starting a vlog. But not just any vlog, a vlog in which we go on blind dates. Not with men, but with books. I have always wanted to do the whole blind date with a book concept, essentially where you get a book that's wrapped and you don't know what it's about. You just like know some brief things about it, like maybe the genre or a couple of bulleted points about the plot. And then you kind of go off the vibes. I got this idea because I went to New York recently. And if you've seen my New York City like book shopping vlog, I posted it recently. I'll link that down below if you want to watch it. I bought this at a bookstore in New York called Book Club. It's basically a bar but also a bookstore. It's really cute. I really liked it. And so I picked this up. They had a bunch of books wrapped up like this. They were selling them for like $17. And I was really excited to read this um, because of the little blurb. And then I thought, why not get two more books to make this sort of a three book vlog? And I so I went to Etsy to get some because I knew that Etsy sold them. And so I got these from, sorry, a bunch of goodies just fell out. Anyway, I got these two from Etsy, um, from two different shops. And so my general idea with these two that I picked from Etsy was that I kind of wanted to stay on this like mysterious route. And so this one was billed as being a book talk, spicy, dark romance. And then this one was like thriller mystery. And then this one, we can read what it says on here. So this one says what to expect, end of the world dot dot, or is it gripping world building, fast-paced plot, sci-fi for people, skeptical sci-fi, detective work, and slow burn romance. And then this one, the book talk spicy one on it says, wedding, best man, procedure. I don't know what procedure means, but it did come with some like cute stickers and stuff. And then the reader's gonna read one, which this one is the mystery thriller, also came with some like really cute stickers and some bookmarks. And this one doesn't actually say anything about like what it's about. I just know that I picked the genre. Okay, so I think we're gonna open the one that I got in New York first because I've had this for weeks and I really wanna know what's inside. So let's go ahead and read it. I feel like it's Christmas and I'm unripping a present. I'm really excited. I hope it's a book that I've never heard of because that would be pretty exciting. Okay, so it's a paperback and it's called the World Gives Way by Marissa Levian. I've literally never heard of this before. In 50 years, Mira will be free. Until then, she's a contract worker on a ship carrying the last of humanity to a new home. Her life and labor bargained away generations ago to Earth's most powerful wealthy families, families like the Carlisles. But when one night she finds the Carlisles dead, Mira bolts, burdened with the terrible secret they died to escape. Interesting. So it's kind of like sci-fi vibes, but mystery vibes too. I guess next we'll open up this one. I am a little nervous because the category I chose was spicy slash dark romance. So I'm hoping that I did actually get a dark romance and I didn't just get a spicy book. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not to be like overly disappointed, I think that I misunderstood the category when I was choosing it. I really wanted a dark romance, but this is just spicy. So this is The Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez. I've actually never read any of her romance before, so I'm not like mad that I have to read this because I have had this author on my TBR for a long time. Kristen Peterson doesn't do drama, will fight to the death for her friends, and has no room in her life for guys who just don't get her. She's also keeping a big secret, facing a medically necessary procedure that will make it impossible for her to have children. Planning her best friend's wedding is bittersweet for Kristen, especially when she meets the best man, Josh Copeland. He's funny, sexy, never offended by her mile-wide streak of sarcasm, and always one chicken enchilada ahead of her hangry. Even her dog stuntman mike adores him the only catch josh wants a huge family someday and Kristen knows he'd be better off with someone else but as their attraction grows it's harder and harder to keep him at arm's length i don't know i guess i'll be sexy here i don't know i don't know i don't know abby Jimenez has just never been at the top of my tbr so but not all blind dates we go on are amazing perhaps this will end up being a favorite book i don't know i don't know let me not hold it against them because i don't have reading comprehension i guess all right so next we're going to open this one the bow is in a knot why I, ma'am 
Oh, there we go. Okay, so we have um, Pretty Baby by Mary Kubica. It also looks like it used to be a library book, but I do think that on this user's Etsy shop, they say that um, the books you get are gonna be used and that they might be like old library books. That doesn't really bother me, if we're being honest. Mm -hmm. But I've actually never read Mary Kubica before. She's also been on my TBR for a long time. She sees the teenage girl on the train platform standing in the pouring rain, clutching an infant in her arms. She boards the train and is whisked away, but she can't get the girl out of her head. Heidi Wood has always been a charitable woman. She works for a nonprofit, takes in stray cats. Still, her husband and daughter are horrified when Heidi returns home one day with a young woman named Willow and her four-month-old baby in tow. Heidi spends the next few days helping Willow get back on her feet but as clues into willow's past begin to surface heidi is forced to decide how far she's willing to go to help a stranger what starts as an act of kindness quickly spirals into a story far more twisted than anyone could have anticipated i can't say that that blurb like really draws me in i feel like when i open these two i kind of like lost the wind in my sails but it's fine it's fine the whole point of these blind dates with books is to read books that i've like would have never picked up otherwise. Okay, so I think what we're gonna do to choose which book I wanna read first is do a little try a chapter moment. So we're gonna go curl up on the couch. I'm gonna read the first chapter of each of these books and then that will kind of decide the reading order of like what I'm most excited about. And we'll kind of just go from there. Okay, I've made some choices and they might be surprising. Uh, first, I'm going to read The Friend Zone. I noticed right off the bat that this is a dual perspective romance, which is my favorite kind of romance by far. I love hearing from both the guy and girl's perspectives. I just feel like it enriches the story so much more. And I also really liked that these had pretty short chapters. The first chapter starts out with the guy, Josh, and he kind of just gets into talking about how he's going through a breakup and his ex is kind of being vindictive and like not paying him back for some random stuff. And then very quickly we go into uh, Kristen's perspective. So I am very curious to read this. Um, I hope I like it. Again, I don't like love the concept. Like the, the whole plot is like not super interesting to me um, only because I don't really care about kids <laughs> at all. Like I'm just like not like a motherly type person. So this whole conflict of her like not being able to have kids and him wanting kids is just simply like not my vibe. I think from there, I'm going to read um, The World Gives Away. Um, this one, I wasn't really sure how I felt about the writing style. And honestly, I thought the Mary Kubica book sounded better, but I don't want to save this to the end because it's very long. So I figure I'll sandwich them. Like, surprisingly, the one that I haven't heard of that I was more excited for once I started reading, I wasn't sure. Um, I also might pick up an audiobook to go along with physically reading uh, just because I find that things with a lot of world building are better when I listen to them. So I might do that. Honestly, I might do that for all of these, but very specifically this one, I do think I'll go on Audible or Scribd and find the audiobook. And then lastly, I'm going to read Pretty Baby. I am interested, intrigued by this. Again, I don't really care about kids, so there is a baby focus in this, but that's fine. So this is the most random TBR for me. I truly would have never picked these books up unless I heard another booktuber talking about them and like hyping them up. We'll see how it goes. I really hate this book. I, if I could give this book negative stars, I would absolutely do that because this book was garbage rat. Like it was so bad. Like I can't even begin to describe. So let me just preface this by saying I am about to rant about this and probably spoil the book for you. So if you were interested in reading this book, I would skip to the next book in the vlog. All these markings I have here, like little bookmarks I put in is to read you quotes of how fucking bad this book is. This book is misogynistic, it's sexist, it's a little homophobic randomly, and it's not good representation for women who are infertile. I wasn't loving that Josh was like ex-military and I wasn't loving the cheating vibes. The cheating vibes are so fucking bad in this book, uh, but I wasn't loving any of those things. Um, the ex-military thing is like a personal preference. Like obviously there's nothing wrong with being an ex-military guy. That doesn't automatically mean that you're a conservative person, but the way in which Josh is written in this, I just feel 
like he is conservative and I don't like it. He just talks about getting his gun a lot and is really overprotective of Kristen. Like anytime they go anywhere that's like unsafe, he's overly protective and it's just kind of weird and gross. And I'm just like, is this really your man's? Is this the man's that everyone likes? I'm trying to remember what all these quotes are that I have in here. Number one, like I was saying, it's kind of sexist slash misogynistic. Like whenever Josh wants to compliment Kristen, he has to put down other women. Like he's like, oh, Kristen's the cool girl. Like he literally calls her the cool girl and calls her a unicorn multiple times. She had no makeup on, sweats, hair and fucking curlers. Hell, she didn't even change out of the shirt with the enormous lasagna stain on the front before we left the house. And she was a thousand times better than the drop dead gorgeous yoga instructor from a few hours earlier. Cause he went on a date earlier. And so he was like comparing her to Kristen. And then he goes, fun, witty, smart, beautiful, the cool girl. Ew, when? Well, romance authors understand that we don't want to read about the cool girl. There is another part here where he says she was like a unicorn, a mythical creature, an honest, no drama woman who didn't bullshit and drank beer and cussed and didn't care about what people thought of her. She was a unicorn tucked in the body of an attractive woman with a great ass. Okay, and then, and then, and then, off of Josh, now we'll go on to Kristen. So Kristen's super fucking annoying because she's billed as being like the cool girl, but she's so relatable because she struggles with periods and has fibroids on her ovaries, which is, again, that's sad. If the representation of her not being able to have children was like good, I would feel sympathy for her, but she just, as a person is so insufferable. The cheating vibes in this are astronomical. She keeps saying in her head, I'm not a cheater, but then getting in all these situations where she almost kisses Josh and it's just really, how are you not already cheating? Like that's emotional cheating. Like, do you know the definition of emotional cheating? Cause you're doing it right now. There's literally a scene where he gives her a foot massage and he gives her a piggyback ride and they spend like all their time together. They're basically like besties. And I'm sorry if I found out that I had a long distance boyfriend or a partner that was doing the shit that Kristen is doing with someone else, I would be livid and break up with them. There's quite a bit of like fat phobia in this that I don't like. So basically Kristen is a very tiny person. Like they go out of their way to tell us multiple times that Kristen is like five, three and a hundred 10 pounds like they literally put on page that she's 110 pounds but there's so many times where she says things about her body because she is prone to bloating because of her issues like with her reproductive system and so there is a scene where like after she's had sex with him like when they were having sex she basically was like please don't touch my stomach it bloats i don't i don't feel good about it so he like doesn't touch her stomach so she goes and she tells her best friend sloan that they had sex and as if that wasn't bad enough i had to tell him to ignore my swollen stomach it was fucking humiliating she always talks about her stomach like this like her bloated stomach she talks about it really negatively and i'm reminding you that she's a very tiny woman so it's like she just has like a little bit of a belly going on and she's very negative about it totally get that that can be a really upsetting place to be like especially as a woman but i feel like the way that abby jimenez wrote it is just like not relatable to me it's honestly just like fucking offensive he probably wouldn't have noticed it but i felt like i had to explain it anyway in case he did and found himself wondering if he was boning a pregnant chick miss abby abby girl to girl abigail if, if that's your full name. Why in the fuck would you write that? Anyway, there's numerous times throughout the book where Kristen talks about her stomach like that. When we are introduced to her boyfriend, Tyler, who's long distance, we are told that we're not supposed to like him because he's too cultured. Like he likes to drink wine. Kristen likes to drink beer. He likes to go to the theater. She wants to go to backyard barbecues. Like she's just like the cool laid back girl. And he's just like way too hoity toity for her. And so she's just like, oh, I don't really like him. He doesn't really fit my lifestyle, which I'm like, why the fuck would you date him for two years then? Okay, girly. Anyway, so he shows up after they've broken up, he shows up because he gets leave or something and he comes and he wants to like kind of talk out their relationship with Kristen and maybe get back together with her and so they start talking about how they first met like they were at like a piano bar she goes you were so well dressed I thought for sure you were gay and that's not the first time they make an implication about Tyler being like too fruity like it's like weird vibes if we could take away all the other things that I wasn't liking about this like for example if you're not offended by weird conservative vibes or Josh constantly putting down women to lift up Kristen or Kristen insulting her stomach and being really like fat phobic or you know just the general like vibe of her being the cool girl or whatever if you could get past all of that guess what happens at the end of this book mind you this book has been billed as like amazing rep for women who are infertile like it's supposed to be like oh this is a really revolutionary romance book because it's talking about periods and cramps and infertility and that's not normal in the romance genre at the end of the book because they've been having sex without a condom the whole time she gets fucking pregnant she gets pregnant and has a baby and the epilogue is her and him like they're married and they have a baby she had a baby i'm fucking done with that book negative stars but we just need to move on to the next book because the next book was honestly a five-star read it was amazing.
flawless. So let's just move on so I can feel more positive. Okay, so like I said, this book, five stars, amazing show-stopping like just spiritually took me to a new height i expected so little and i came out with so much like this is just such a beautiful book that made me cry the world building was so fascinating i already read the back of this book in the beginning of the video but i do want to give you a little more insight into this book to kind of convince you about why you should read this because it was chefs get so good basically in this book we have mira so she's a contract worker and so what that means in this world is about 150 years ago earth was ending like the apocalypse was a happening and so all the rich people on earth that could afford it were like we're gonna build a giant ship like with scientists and architects and all this fancy stuff a ship the size of switzerland that is like an encapsulated world so like everybody who lives on it just feels like it's the world because it's got like cities in it it's got an ocean like they literally put a bunch of shit in it to make it feel like a real world and kind of close it off from space and so all the rich people who could afford a ticket were able to go off of earth and go but mind you rich people are used to having people who work for them so they were like okay let's come up with a system to get workers to come with us so they do this thing with like contract workers where basically they were like you can come on the ship for free but until we reach our destination which the point of this ship is to like in a and i think it's like in 200 years they're going to reach a planet that is inhabitable is inhabitable uninhabitable inhabitable and have it. They can they could live on it. <laughs> Obviously, this is literally modern day slavery. <laughs> and so this book is so fascinating with the world building because the way it's written is we have Mira's chapters, but then in between Mira's chapters, we have chapters that are like giving you kind of exposition and explanations of the ship and like how it's come to be. And all of those chapters were fascinating. Like the way that Marissa Levian, Levine, Levin, however you say her name, how she did the world building was like so good and then i was actually surprised i didn't know there was there is another perspective from a guy named tobias who is basically a detective so again at the very beginning of this book um like i was saying mary's a contract worker and her employers die like that something happens and they die and it's this big thing so she has to take their baby and run away because you know she's a contract worker and she doesn't want to be a contract worker anymore so she runs away so tobias is a detective and he is investigating the case of you know the deaths of these people that mira was working for and obviously she's taken off the baby so they feel like she kidnapped the baby and so he is kind of chasing after her so there's a little bit of like a cat and mouse chase so it's a little bit of like a crime thriller at the same time and both of their perspectives were like so good they were third person limited but you got to know so much about each character but this book is just so good it's like it's so few times do i read something and immediately feel like i'm gonna give it five stars like even a quarter of the way into this i was like this is a five star read like it was so emotional and so well written and just gave me all the feelings i want from like kind of a, a light sci-fi book i really 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 want this to be like an hbo limited series this would be the most fantastic tv show because first of all the the ship that they're on is so cool and everything they're doing is so cool but anyway some of the people on goodreads who gave this negative reviews say that it's very meandering and that they felt like it didn't really have a point um, because of some of the plot stuff that's going on in it. But I could not disagree more. Like I literally saw someone say nothing happens in here and I'm like, everything happens, literally everything. It's just like, it's so good. It's so fantastic. It, I will say that the ending could be unsatisfactory for certain people, but I felt like it was so beautifully written and so sad, like just so sad and beautiful and just like everything I needed out of a book. Like I really did not have high expectations reading this. And now I'm just like so happy I own a copy of it and it's a signed copy. Like I actually am like thrilled that I have this because it's truly going to be on every recommendation list I ever do in the future. Like if I do a video about underrated books, I'm gonna talk about this. Like this only has a thousand ratings on Goodreads. Like girlies, please, you have to read this. All right, folks, we finished the last book and I didn't really like this either. This was passable, it was fine. I think if I were to give it a rating, it would probably be somewhere between two and a half to three stars. I think that the strengths of this book are that the writing style and the character development is really fascinating. I just don't know if I would honestly call it a thriller very much. Like there's not very many thrilling things about it. There's not much of a mystery being solved. So as you remember from earlier in the book, we basically have this woman who's very charitable. She sees a young girl with a baby at the train station and decides to take her home and let her live with her for a while, even though her family doesn't really want her to do that. And so we kind of get into the psyche of both the main character, Heidi, and then the young girl, Willow, as they kind of progress getting to know each other as Willow is like staying with Heidi. And there just wasn't 
that many thrilling things about it. Like Willow's perspective is set a little bit in the future and she's kind of talking to a, I don't know who the woman really is, but she's like so, some sort of like authority figure and she's kind of telling her about her background, like what happened. And don't get me wrong, this book made me cry because what happens to Willow as a person is so sad. <laughs> and so getting to know her and kind of her background and like where she came from was interesting. But genuinely, there was nothing too shocking about this book until about the last like 10%. I saw on Goodreads that some people DNF'd this because they thought it was boring. And I would have to say I wouldn't blame them if I wasn't reading this for a video, I might have DNF'd as well. I think I would be interested in reading more Mary Kubica, like because of her writing style and the feeling like these characters were really fleshed out. The only character I didn't really like in this book was the husband. I'm just getting really sick and tired of the trope in thrillers to have husbands that are just so terrible to their wives. He definitely has like a turnaround in this book, but throughout the whole book he just kind of was like copy and paste from every other thriller I've ever read. Like what is wrong with husbands not being good fathers, not being kind to their wives? Like don't we just get enough of that in the real world? I guess the point of thrillers is to have characters that are kind of flawed, but I don't know. It's just getting really tired. Also, this library copy is really just reflecting the light. In conclusion to this video, I guess we're done talking about this. This is fine. It's fine. It was fine. I'll try this author again in the future. Hopefully in the future, her other thrillers are more like mindfuckery. I think that was what was missing from this is we just needed more like twists and turns. Like I like thrillers that kind of feel like a very hyped up like movie that are just like twists and turns everywhere. Like that's what I'm looking for and this just didn't give it but anyway so back to what I was saying in conclusion 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 I think what I've realized with this challenge is that if I'm going to do blind date with a book I need to do it where I don't just pick the genre and kind of leave it up to the person to just pick a random book because these books weren't my type like this in the friend zone they just they weren't my type and I didn't like them and if I a friend had set me up on a man that was these books in man form I don't know what point I'm trying to make. And so what I'm learning is that if I were to do this challenge again, I would need the books to have the description of like what's inside them for me to choose if I think I'm gonna like them. I think the reason I struck gold with The World Gives Way and gave it five stars is because I was able to read the little like teasers about what the book was about from the bookseller and so it kind of like drew me in and I was like, okay, I like light sci-fi, I like slow burn romance, I like detective work and that really sold me and then in the end it ended up being a fantastic book and I think with Pretty Baby and with the uh, friend zone, I almost forgot what that book was called for a second, I didn't really get to pick that besides the genres and so they were a very broad, romance and thrillers is super broad so but yeah I think we'll just end the video here. Let me know down below if you enjoyed this, if you'd want to see a part two of this or if there are any other vlogs that you've been wanting me to do, let me know. I'm looking for ideas. And yeah, thank you all so much for watching. You're all beautiful. Have a nice day.